I, I was just afforded a great opportunity to rebrand and develop logos and sit in a room with Jay-Z. I was, I was called to run the Women's World Cup in 99 wow. here at Giant Stadium. It just all does go quick. It goes yeah. very, very quick. So whether you're in sports or whatever, you, you got to make sure you take a step back and enjoy the journey and just make sure you're, you're taking that journey with good people. When you have good teammates, no matter what the title is or the office you're in, you know, you learn from each other. Everybody. Welcome back to this. I'm your host, Shauna Griffiths. And today's Real Talk is with a real leader who is an absolute legend in pro sports marketing and sports marketing in general. Um, he is literally one of the best leaders, humans, I think that exists and who had such an impact on my journey. So Fred Mangione, I call him Freddie. Freddie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Shauna, how are you? It's so great to see you. <laughs> so folks, uh, to give you context, I always give you context to the guests on the show. Freddie and I spent years together, seven and a half, I think, something like yeah. that, at the Nets, yeah. at the New Jersey Nets at the time. Uh, talk about being in the trenches together. Freddie was my rock, my leader. Um, and I don't have a lot of regrets, but the one regret I have in my career is walking away from Freddie as a leader. So um, we are, I've wanted him on the show for a long time. Um, had to chase him down. <laughs> One of the busiest guys in the business. Um, and so, Fred, we're going to jump right into your evolution because where you're at right now, you were most recently with the Jets. Before right. that, with the Brooklyn Nets. We were in Newark for a little while. <laughs> New Jersey Nets. New Jersey. Um, and you're, I think, like, from my perspective, you're evolution of your career is so remarkable because as I remember it's like you started out in ticket sales and then just exploded your career really is ticket sales marketing leader everything so um I'm not even doing you justice but give give no, <laughs> give us an no. idea of your, your evolution and what you're up to today well look I, I appreciate it Sean and it's so great to see you and as I say when when you have good teammates no matter what the title is or the office you're in you know, you learn from each other. And there were many days you walked to my office and kicked my butt in and told me, we got to do this, we got to do that. And I'd be like, Shauna, <laughs> you're right. So, you know, I appreciate for all you've done for me in the marketing end. But um, look, I was a kid coming out of college years and years ago. I don't want to age myself, but, you know, wanted to get into sports, but didn't break in for a while and got in, actually got into the pharmaceutical business for a little bit. And I was done with my training and just about to start working at Pfizer um, and, um, got a call if I wanted to sell tickets for five hours an hour and 10% commission at the Meadowlands for a, uh, a minor league roller hockey team, not a hockey, oh. not even an ice hockey team, a roller hockey team and a, um, an arena football team. So my, uh, my mom, who I lost at a young age, looked at me and said, I think you're nuts, but if you want to do this, do it while you're young and go chase it. And, um, 28 years later, I'm still sitting in this crazy business, you know, um, through a lot of different streams and meeting a lot of great people. So, you know, I did I did the minor league stuff for five years and probably one of the best things I have. Um, and um, again, I'm going to age myself here, but I was I was called to run the Women's World Cup in 99 wow. here at Giant Stadium. And at the time, women's sports wasn't near what it was today. This is, you know, you're talking Mia Hamm, Julie Foudy. Um, Brandy Chastain, these global icons who were just getting going. And um, I had the task of marketing and selling out Giant Stadium. And candidly, people laughed at me, but we were on ABC Sports Channel 7 here locally. I flew out to LA three times to interview. And the woman who was running the event, who I still talk to today, um, Marla Messing, who I think the world of, looked at me and said, can, can we sell out Giant Stadium? I'm like, we will sell this out. They were ready to tarp the top. They were ready to downsize it. And um, we just put some programs together and um, it was one of the top attended events um, in Giant Stadium history. So I've always been proud of that and what we did because we literally built it from scratch. And I think that then helped me go on. Um, you know, after that, I was offered a job with the Boston Red Sox and a couple other things. And, um, you know, again, my mom passed away at a young age, so I ended up staying local. And um, a gentleman who I knew through the years called me from the Nets and said, I heard you're available. You know, do you want to come help me restructure my sales department? And I told them, um, I will, but I just want to be upfront. I'll probably take this job for about a year, maybe two max. 
and I have other things I want to tackle. And 18 years later, um, to your point, three buildings later, three owners later, three CEOs later, um, two logos later, you name it, and a whole plethora of, um, unfortunately, some up and down basketball. Um, we ended up in Brooklyn. So um, everyone knows the story of Brooklyn. And I, I was just afforded a great opportunity to rebrand and develop logos and sit in a room with Jay-Z and you name it, just things that a, 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 a kid growing up with a single mom in northern New Jersey and, and western New Jersey that had his in, in Jefferson Township would have never thought in his wildest dreams. So um, the, the game and the industry has taken me to many places from Russia to China to London uh, multiple times. So I, I've been beyond lucky. But, um, you know, we then um, when I was in Brooklyn, I was able to really elevate um, ultimately up to the COO position and where the ownership group at the time, Mr. Prokhorov um, turned around and said, we want more, we want to build more. So we went out and um, bought the Nassau Coliseum. We went out and bought Webster Hall. We went out and op open, open offices in, in LA. So we expanded pretty quickly. And then at the time, ironically, just when we thought everything settled down, um, my boss walked in and said, hey, we're gonna go get the New York Islanders and I want you to run it. So uh, I picked up a hockey team along the way. So I, I've been fortunate enough to work three of the four majors. But um, as I always say, I'm not I'm man enough to tell everyone I, I can never work in baseball. But after doing all that and, and bringing the Islanders over, I just felt it was time to pass the baton. I, I had a yearning to get in the NFL. I knew the president of the Jets um, pretty good at the time, Neil Glatt, who became a friend over the years. And, you know, we got into talking and he said, if you're ever ready to make the jump, a lot of people never thought I would. Um, I had an affinity for the brand, for the Jets. So um, went over there, was able to restructure some things there and not knowing they actually relaunched a new uniform. So um, I didn't think I was ever going to have to go through that again. Lucky enough, most of the hard work was done and it was just more about launching it and getting out there with it. But it was taking the Nets, which was rebuilding a brand. And then the Jets, it was a little different because it was, you know, just paying homage to this historic brand. So I was very lucky to do that and be able to look at these two brands. So, um, so, you know, I did that for six years and, you know, it just got to the point where I was like, I don't know if this team stuff's for me after 28 years. So um, I'm taking a little time now, but along the way, I, I, I've been doing a lot of consulting um, in, the, in the NHL space, the MLS space, um, the ticketing space, the digital marketing space. I'm doing some work for a, a Power Five conference in the collegiate space. So I've been pretty active as I as I figure out what's next, but it's kept me sharp and, you know, it's all been through relationships and how we get in this industry and, you know, still talking to great people like yourself. So um, I've been able to, um, you know, stay busy, but more importantly, keep dealing with good people. And um, it's very cliche-ish as, as everyone says, but, this industry, especially because you spend more time with your colleagues than you do with your family sometimes. And, um, you know, so it's very, very important to line yourself up with good people. Yeah, it's so true. It's as, as uh, folks, as Freddie was talking, I'm like kind of laughing at, at various parts because I'm remembering the crazy shit that happened when you said like ups and downs of basketball. I remember the year. When I think we might have won one game all season, it might have been yeah. a preseason well, game. We, we started 0 and 18, and uh, oh, we were on the cover of Sports Illustrated. We were on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and um, you know, I remember everyone going out after we won one game, like we just you know made it to the playoffs. But um, that's where, and I go by the mantra: control what you could control. Yeah, so you I've told every staff I've worked for, you know, when a ball went up every year, when a puck dropped especially in football and, and in this New York market, because it's it's a football market. I said, once yeah. that ball gets kicked off, we're done. No one's yeah. listening to the sales and marketing staff anymore. So um, you got to take advantage and just tell the story and the product, treat people right, treat your customers right. And, you know, we didn't have the luxury of Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant at the time. So, but, you know, I take solace that, um, and, you know, I still talk to Sean Marks here and there. He says, if you guys didn't build this platform, these guys wouldn't be here. So oh, we have, yeah. you know, the, the, the crew that opened up that arena, we, we, we thank you for it. And um, he's always very respectful. And I joke around, I think the biggest compliment I ever got in my career was from Billy King. He walked in my office one day and said, you guys built this brand in this arena up to be the biggest thing in the world that I, I got to hope this team could keep up with you guys. And, um, <laughs> but I said, we're all in it together. And, yeah. and we were, and, you know, when, when the business side and the product side could come together and you know each other's pain, 
you're, you're in it together and it, it, it makes for a great relationship. We're like that at the Jets too. There, there's yeah. not a better person in this industry than Joe Douglas. And, you know, he would walk in my office all the time. Like, what can we do? I want to win more games. I want to do this. And, you know, he, he gets it. And those are the people you want to be in a foxhole with. Yeah, absolutely. And such a great point, you know, that whole like foxhole in the trenches, you and I use, you know, we talk about that a lot. And I love what you said. And, and I have to say, like, there are some I talk about you so often because I quote you so often throughout <laughs> my own journey and my own leadership efforts. And the two things that I quote people that quote you on is what you said is control. What you can control. I remember so many times walking into your office, like freaking out about whatever the thing was. It was like, Shauna, control what you could. Can you control that? <laughs> and so we could, you know, we could. And then the other thing, though, that's very related is we can get through anything together. And I can't tell you how many times I use that exact thing because whether it was me getting 3 million pocket schedules printed with the wrong date. <laughs> up. <laughs> I did that folks. Or when I got the billboard printed and forgot to uh, put any like URL or phone number or anything on it. I mean, stupid shit that I, but I remember again, it was like, I'd come in like it was the end of the world and you would look at me and say, we'll get through anything together. Now those are just little examples, but you know, when you're coming up, you could have been very different as a leader. You could have come down on me and threatened my job and everything, but you're so right. The way you have always approached work is like to really invest in the people and to, if you're in the trenches together, you work through anything together. Yeah. You know, um, people ask me all the time, whether it's, getting on a podcast like this or talk, you know, what's your best highlight in your career? And yeah, of course, opening up Barclays and reinventing a brand and, you know, doing some great things at the Jets and the Women's World Cup, like I, I can name it, but but I, I, I get back and it's just, it's just the people now who've started with me, like yourself and have grown on. I mean, I've had people who, you know, old colleagues who won 40 under 40 and they're like, you know, I'm thinking about you tonight. If I didn't, you know, the tie you gave me once I'm wearing tonight, the cufflinks you gave me, like just mm -hmm. stuff like that. And notes I still get, you know, during a pandemic, a couple of people sent me cards just going, I'm thinking about you and your family and like, like out of nowhere and people who I haven't even talked to for a while. And um, mm -hmm. that's the stuff when people check in with you and, you know, through the good and the bad, um, yeah. like it's easy to be everyone's teammate when you're winning, you know, um, you know, 10 games in the NFL or going to playoffs in the NBA or doing whatever in the NHL. Um, it, it's easy to be teammates, but it's the tough times. And I feel like I probably talk to the people who were with me the tough times. Then, you know, like, look, we were lucky enough to go to the finals twice, right? With the Nets and we, we blinked and we were sitting there playing Shaq and Kobe going, oh my God, this is the most amazing job in the world. And then two years later, we were winning 10 games. Like that's how quick it goes. And I just yeah. don't think it, fortunately, it goes so fast and it's so hard on you. This industry is so taxing that people literally, it's again, it's another cliche, but people just don't have fun with it. You know, I joke around all the time. When I left Brooklyn and I started working at the Jets and I was I was close to home and everything, I'd have people call me up and be like, what's it like? Like, oh my God. And I'm like, I'm not riding my work, my bike to work every day and in the back you know, field having to catch with Sam Darnold. Like, it's a job and it, it's still hard to get in a fell and it's harder because it's, it's at a, it's at a bigger level. The yeah. the stakes are a lot higher. So it's all relative, but again, it's about the people you're with and who wants to be in a foxhole with you. And, and it is, it's, it's, it's about life lessons. You know, I, I just think when you talk about the pocket schedule, yeah, it seemed like the end of the world. And I'm sure I never told you, but I'm sure I got the lashing for it, but it never oh, made sense did. to go down. If you know what I mean? I never believed in getting it from the owner to the CEO to me to any, like it's a life. Let's fix it. Let's put things in place. That'll make us better. Yeah. So it won't happen again. Um, yeah. Cause it's going to happen again. Something's going to fall. Um, and, and it's no one's fault. You move quick, you move fast and you're trying to be perfect and no one's ever going to be perfect. So it's yeah. just, you just try to minimize the amount of mistakes, not try to not make any, because it's, yeah. it's just impossible to do in the industry. It's so true. And I'm so glad you brought those things up because I think those are really great markers of how, what I got from you and how you lead, which is to take hits for people sometimes. When you're in a leadership position, trust me, I've had other people who like point the finger at you or they just, you know, blow you up. And I know there were plenty of times when you took hits for me or other people. When you said those things to me, you were like, 
And I and literally, I remember what we did. We had a, a process that we put in place <laughs> afterward and that I have used that process with other things, you know, but again, it's like, it's so important because I also think that from that, I learned so much from you as a leader, right? How I wanted to emulate those things, but also the way you have treated me in that moment actually had a profound impact on my ability to be resilient and keep going and actually perform better. So, you know, I think again, like for those who you are listening, these are really important moments. It's like, you know, if everything's great, that's one thing, but how you act as a leader in those moments where the shit is hitting the fan is, you know, has such impact. Yeah. Well, I, as I always said, putting chaos on top of chaos never oh. makes the world better. And and look, the you know it doesn't matter whether you're in the NBA, NHL, um, NFL. You know these owners are kind of all the same, and they have expectations. But most of them, at the end of the day, they don't really understand the industry, so that makes it a little bit harder as well. So um, you know, as you get to certain levels and you interact with them, you want to explain things, but you want to keep it at a high level. But at the same point with your staff, you want to have the devil in the details and make sure you're dialing down with everything so it, it doesn't bubble up to a high level, meaning, you know, certain mistakes or whatever. And um, look, I, I, I've always been told I don't micromanage, but yet yeah. people be like, Freddie, you're in the weeds too much. Don't. And I'm like, it's not because I'm micromanaged. I just want to make sure I'm helping. And yeah. as I always said, wherever I've been, whether it was you and I, Shauna, or my marketing guy at the Jets, Tim Kemp, or whoever it might have been, I always said, I want to have, I want to be on the same page with you. So if my boss asks you a question, you're going to know how I'm going to answer vice versa. And that's how I managed at the Jets. That's how I managed at the Nets. That's how I managed in Brooklyn when you left. Yeah. And, you know, that that's how, because it's all communication and the communication starts internally before it, I always joke around. Everyone looks at me crazy and I could be, but I go having the communication within the four walls is the first yeah. step. We're all worried about the marketing message and what we're telling the public and the PR message in this. But I go, if we're all not aligned within the four walls, it doesn't matter what you say. That's where the chaos starts because in the message going out isn't, you know, isn't in lockstep. And that's, that's when trouble hits. And again, whether you're winning 10 games, no games, whatever, I just feel like you want to be buttoned up as much as possible because it's easy for all of us to say the team's terrible, the team's this. And I, I've told people, unfortunately, it may just be my MO in the market. I've worked for a lot of bad teams, unfortunately. But <laughs> yeah. I always have the running joke, you know, I, I'm, I'm not wearing any rings and I only got one on. And depending on the day of the week, my wife will tell me if I could keep it on or off, you know, so when <laughs> she's mad at me. But um, but you persevere, you go through and, you know, you just you just work every day to get better. And, and my thing was always about the staff. Yeah. And can't leave. some people I work for didn't always believe what my philosophies like, all right, yeah, the staff's fine, but you know, whatever. But I was always, um, you know, I always just felt responsible and, and wanted to make sure everyone knew how I was. And, you know, I talked to everyone, you know, all the time. It's important to know everyone's names and, and the whole organization and departments, mm -hmm. whether you're working with me or not and, and basketball and football. I just, I just feel that stuff's important because yeah. not everyone gets to talk to leaders in the organization. And I know talking to Fred doesn't mean anything, but just getting a casual hello from someone, even down to an intern, you'd be amazed how far that goes. You'd be amazed. Yeah, totally. I mean, I know, what, I'm so glad you brought up the point too about communication because that's really where I learned to, you know, to, that thing, exactly what you said about being the same page. Like that's where I learned my infamous like Shauna emails where it's like you just had it all laid out so that you were never caught off guard. You knew how to talk about different things that were going on. And the amount that you trusted me at that time was huge. But I think it was like, again, like those things that you did at the time, I didn't necessarily, you know, I didn't know I was just learning from you. But I think, again, I'm, I'm pointing these things out because as people are listening, that communication is so key it's not just you as a leader talking at people but it is that exchange and it is that concept of being on the same page and as busy as you are as busy as you have always been freddie you make yourself present for people and i think again like that is a marker of someone who is developing people making an impact um, and, it, you know, again, like you're saying, it's all about the people. It's all about those relationships you build and the trust you build together. Because I was fighting every day to be better for us, for you, for, you know what I mean? And quite frankly, sometimes you forget about the product on the court because you're so bonded together to make it move forward. 
Yeah. And you know, it, it's funny when I was going through the, um, when I was going through the process, when I, when I was first thinking about going to the jets, I remember I was going through and when it was all over, I had an executive, um, who's a colleague of mine, you know, walk in my office and tell me, you know, he told me two things. One, I did a presentation and I literally put everyone's names who I knew was going to be in the meeting on their own presentation. So I literally like set up the room, like, it was a sales call. Like, that's how I was yeah. taught. That's how. And I remember someone saying to me, like the old, you know, you had to set hello. Like you had to set the name. Like he, uh, this one gentleman joked around me, but he said to me, you were the only person in the presentation. Um, and it was just someone who was in the room, part of the process. I, I think he probably had a vote, but he didn't have the vote. He said, you were the only person. And if everyone we saw, and we saw a lot of people who talked about career development for their staff. Oh, wow. And yeah. that kind of like. Um, and again, whether right or wrong, whether I spend too much, but I just, as I get older in this career and one day I got my toes in the sand and I'm able to really retire, I just want to look back at people I've been able to look, it's a young person's business. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really getting old now cause I got, you know, my, my kids who have friends and older friends who are in college going, can I meet you for coffee, Mr. Manjone and teach you. So I just feel like you want to, and, and I do that. My wife always says like, it's amazing. You always take, but I, I feel like it's important. I feel like I know I never had that as a kid and coming That's how from I a divorced feel, yeah. family. Yeah. I came from a divorced family and I lost both my parents at a very, very young age and I had to do everything on my own and I can't get a, you know, 30 people jobs in, in my town who are, you know, going to school for sports management. But if I could send a resume or do anything just to help this much, I just feel like that kind of stuff's important. It would have meant the world to me if I had it, but I was just thrown out there. And, you know, some people are luckier than others, but I just feel like if you do right by people, you know, it's important and people just need an opportunity and a chance because in this industry, as we all know, especially now with LinkedIn, you know, and everything yeah. else. Like I used to joke around at the Jets. I, I just had piles and piles of resumes all over my office. And, mm -hmm. you know, everyone wants to get in this business, but it's also not for everyone. No. And then when the pandemic hit and these young kids are like, Freddie, I'm just going to work from home all the time. It's great working for you, but I'm, you know, and they're working for digital agencies or whatever, because they're just sitting in their apartments in Hoboken, which is great, mm -hmm. you know, but the mentality's changed. The, you know, the tenure of people have changed, you know, people's yeah. career motives have changed. They want to make a lot of money quick and they don't want to work that hard, which is fine. And God bless them if they can. Um, but I think there is a balance. I, I think the pandemic taught us all a lot. Look, I'm a, oh, yeah. I'm a, I was in the office every day at seven 30 and people would be like, well, I in here every day to certainly like again. And it like, yeah, I was working, but you know what it was? The everyday employee would come in and just start BSing with me. And it was yeah. that, not being on time. Hey, did you see the game last night? Or just, yeah. and a lot of time it'd be young salespeople who maybe during the day, you know, would, would kind of come by my office, but they know once I got going, it was crazy and they didn't, but I'd have that time where I was just talking about my kid's basketball game or what else was going on or, you know, and that's the connection time and the important time where you really connect with your employees and, and do things like that. So um, it's important to try to do it. And you're not going to hit everyone, no. but, just making laps and popping in offices or even just seeing a young sales staff being like, what do you guys need? Like, it just yeah. goes a long way. It goes a long yeah. way. Yeah, It goes such a long way. And uh, the whole part of like the lifestyle and I want to talk about, which is, you know, working in this industry is not a job. It is a lifestyle. And, you know, I lived it for 13 years. You lived it far longer than I did. Um, are living it. And I mean, I want to, I want to actually get a bit from you about like, have you been able to maintain how you've been able to, because those are long days and you're in the yeah. NBA. What are there? Yeah. 44 games a year, not including yeah. your playoffs, including preseason. You know, that's a long run. And, you know, again, you were at the office, whether it was a game day or not back in the, you know, in the NBA family, seven 30 in the morning till after the game at night and all the time, and yet you always, you mentioned your wife and I, I'd never met her in person, but I know her name is Jen because she was, she, it was like, again, other people who I think we could, I could consider in, you know, at that very level that you were, it's like, you never heard about their family. Definitely didn't hear about their wives. You're like, do they even exist? But it was yeah. always, it seemed like you always were able to find some sort of balance or at least be able to maintain that priority. Um, and so I'd love for you to like talk about that a bit because whether it's people are like, God, 
you know, they, they get to learn about that, or maybe someone's listening who they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it, it is, it is hard. And there were times my wife would be like, go live in Brooklyn and, you know, and stay there for the week. And just, you know, you know, when I was in Jersey, it was different. You know, my kids, um, probably my daughter, you know, who's now a freshman in college, she probably, you know, I don't want to say affected, but she lived it with the most because, you know, as she was growing up, um, when she was young and the kids were really young, I was here in Jersey, but I was, you know, again, to your point, what people forget you know, I joke around the NFL all the time when you're sitting there on Thanksgiving with your family and you're watching those games all day. You know what? Someone's working them and they're not yeah. with their family. Um, yeah. Our first couple of years in Brooklyn, we, we played Christmas Day. I was wow. waking up, opening up gifts in a suit and running out the door to get to Brooklyn to go run a game. And like you're giving that up. Um, so for me, I'm not going to proclaim I, I got it. I had it down because I didn't. You know, there were there were there were days you got it. There were days you weren't. What really yeah. hit us, um, you know, it was tough. Like when I, when we were opening up the building, like my wife always said to me, like, that was hard. And she wasn't talking about my job. She was talking about hers. And because it is a job. And, and my kids were like knee deep in it at the time, meaning like they needed, you know, they're not self. They weren't self-sufficient the way they are today, obviously, as teenagers. But um, and it really hit me as much as my wife would talk about, like, you got to be, and I, and I felt like I was, but I just didn't want to be that dad coming in on a game on two wheels on my car, you know, like, but I was in Brooklyn and I didn't want to move my kids. Um, so yeah. I commuted to Brooklyn for seven years and I'd be on wow. George Washington bridge by, you know, six thirty every day. So, but there had to be days where you just said, I'm done and I'm going through. So that, that's one of the reasons when a jet opportunity comes up, I, I never forget. I ran into a friend in town and they're like, am I seeing you, not only are you coaching your son's travel team, but you're coaching his rec team and this team. I'm like, I got some catching up to do. So, um, you know, so for my son, I kind of dove into it, you know, head on to kind of to that point to catch up on life a little bit. But, you know, yeah. when my wife would tell me, my daughter would wake up on a Monday and be like, what nights is dad home this week? Because, you know, look, I went, we went from renting a building here at the Meadowlands to now running one. So yeah. even when I wasn't in that building, my phone rang all night. Operations, yeah. this, that, yeah. the ice. So um, there isn't a magic plan. You you just really need to try to set yourself up each week to be like, here's what I have. Here's what I'm going to do. You got to make sure you take vacations. You got to make sure you do this. But the arena business is very, very hard. You know, God bless. And we have a lot of them. We have a lot of friends who've come and gone, but God bless anyone who works at Madison Square Garden. I mean, we were <laughs> a, a very active building in Brooklyn and, you know, everyone. And I got a lot of friends there who just it, like it doesn't stop. So yeah. to say I have a Matt, even at the Jets, everyone's like, oh, it's great. You only have 10 games. But it it was it's still a lot. You know, I was yeah. traveling an OK amount. But like, you know, you, you got to make sure you go see clients. You know, you're out. You know, everyone's like, oh, you're going to the Super Bowl. That must be. But you're there for a week and it's all mm -hmm. day every day seeing people going places and um you know it's a lot so you give it up but you, you just got to figure out what does work and but i do always joke around as much as my wife would be like can you work from home a little bit and that was like back in the day like work from home <laughs> then once covid hit she goes i begged you for 10 years to work from home after covid i never want you to work from home again <laughs> so you know because i would just be on the phone all day and I mean, that was just tough because I, I, I just had people work for me crying. Am I going to lose my job? My wife, yeah. my husband lost their job. And when you talk about really diving in and I I talked to anyone who wanted to call me, it didn't matter if they had other. I'm like, call me. And it was yeah. one of those things where you gave if you guys need anything, call me and you get off of Zoom one day and everyone starts calling. You're like, uh oh, you know, <laughs> and I just I literally had my okay. assistant at the time like. I was yeah. setting up one on ones with anyone who wanted to talk to me because we were all just going through, you know, yeah. look, Sean, you know, we went, I went, we went through nine 11 at the nets. I went yeah. super storm. Sandy held up Brooklyn opening up. I mean, the first nets game got canceled because it's, you know, we worked on a building for 10 years and we had to cancel it because the subways were <laughs> yeah. flooded and this and that. So when COVID hit, I kind of just got on the phone and I'm like, Hey, we'll get to it. You know, I've navigated 9-11. We've done this. Like, I, I get it. Like, we're, and all of a sudden, like, I didn't get it. Because those other things were locally. This yeah. was a, a national issue that was, you know, and obviously it was not more devastating than 9-11. But this was a national issue where people were losing jobs, money by the day. And oh, yeah. I told everyone, I go, my number one job is everyone on this call keeping their job. 
to wow. do what you need to do every day. And, you know, we were very lucky because our, our president at the Jets did all he could to keep everyone's jobs. And he, but some of the people who said, I don't know if I can hang in there. I was working the phones and I probably got four of them jobs somewhere else to say, if you can't hang in at the Jets, like, let me help you do something else because we didn't have fans. So, you, you know, if there's no fans, there's no revenue, and there's no revenue, there's right. no bonuses. So you may right. have your job, but you don't have everything else that comes with it. And I said, let me help you somewhere else. And mm -hmm. I was literally on the phone just helping place people who just said, maybe this sports thing isn't for me. I can't just quit. And I wasn't just going to keep paying them. So <laughs> I helped them do other things and, and just try the best you can. But um, there's never a magic answer in this industry. And everyone's just mm -hmm. got to handle situations differently, whether it's your family and, and the, the infamous work-life balance. <laughs> um, you know, the infamous Brett, your Mark would always say, everyone, you know, he would, he would say work life blend, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, how do you just get your family to blend in with, you know, but, um, and it's always great to have your family at games and stuff, but they also don't want to be there every night either. So, yeah. um, so it's yeah. tough. It's tough. It is. But folks, I want to, I want to pause for a second because you said something in there, Fred, when you were talking, which is your number one job during that moment of crisis was to help keep everybody keep their jobs. And folks, like that is the dedication that Fred has as a leader to the people. And I mean, if that's not leadership, I don't know what is, you know, in the way that you, I, that's that element I always got from you of like keeping, putting people first and that, you know, it was like, that's what really mattered. And I mean, and your people work like their asses off for you, yeah, you know, when, yeah. when you can lead that way. And, and I'll say like, look at the people who have come, who were, you know, you were privileged <laughs> to have you as a leader. You got Matt Pizaris leading at the Bucks, Joe Stetson leading at the um, Red Bulls, Laura Lefton leading in the NFL. Like, it's amazing. The Like, again, the, when Mike I talk Savatsky, about Impact, Dan Lefton, Brian right? Baslow, I mean, James Caparo at I was, um, Boston yeah. College, you know. Um, Capra, you I know, just talked to him the other day. Yeah. And, and, you know, guys like um, Capra, you know, Brian Baslow, who went off and you always knew they wanted to be. I mean, I remember Pat Capra walking in my office like, yeah, I'm going to start my own agency. I'm going to do this. And he's a young 20, and I used to always joke around because I knew whenever he had a Gatorade in his hand, there was a good night in Hoboken the night before. And um, I just want to make sure you weren't out too much last night before you quit this job. And um, yeah. But they were all smart. They all knew it. And again, the biggest compliment I get from any of those guys, they're presidents now, they're, see, they're, like, they're doing amazing things. They all call me still. Thanks. Appreciate it. I still yeah. use some Freddyisms there. I still, and that to me is the most important thing for me. And yeah. not not my career, what I've done, but just what I've done for people. That that's yeah. the most important. Thing. And now I have, you know, there there's a there's a young core of up and comers at the Jets, and there, there there's some people there who I worked with are going to do some amazing things in this industry. And um, you know, and that's that's what's important. And when you hear from those people and talk to them and. I just want to help people continue to get better because as I've joked around, I joke to you and everyone else, you know, I'm going to work for someone else someday. You know, I look at Andrew <laughs> Schwartz at Howard Hughes, what he's doing out there. You know, he, he, I, I, he, he was running all the Islanders business for me in Brooklyn. And he turned around one day and said, you know, yeah, I'm going to go run this industry. And I'm like, what do you know about it? And he knows everything about it now. And he's killing it. Yeah. And Mike Savatsky. I mean, we can go on and on. And, you know, I've just been lucky. To, to be attached with some great people. Well, I think we've all been pretty lucky to be attached to you, Fred. You know, I think uh, it's pretty awesome. And it is awesome, like you're saying, is those people who have, um, you know, been with you to see them as they're going. And I will say, like, you and I have maintained contact over the years, but, and I always knew that like we were present for each other, but didn't talk all the time. So through the years, through the miles, and you would always pop up at, you know, times if I like announce something, there you go again. And so, you know, I think again, for people who are listening, I think these bonds that we make with people as we're going through the journey and we're coaching and we're leading people, it doesn't always have to be the constant conversations, but it's that lasting relationship over time where you know that person's there for you. Um, you know, so what I actually want to get to, you talked a bit about helping people find jobs. And and I will say, I was talking to Elisa Padilla the other day, who's a friend of both of ours and an amazing woman. Um, and she was talking about, you have this incredible ability to like thread the needle and help people find 
roles. And she actually used John Bayer as an example, who was leading with you in ticket sales. And she shared with me that you had helped open a door. Now he is leading in a tech security company. Yeah, tech security. So, he works for a company called Evolve, which is just going to take over the industry. And again, it's a relationship. You know, my my old boss at the Jets, Neil Glatt, is a board member of the company. And he mm. goes, and he, he always jokes around me. He goes, who, who's a good salesperson leader who thinks sports from the man Jones tree? Do you have anyone? And I'm like, I have someone. I knew right <laughs> away just... And so I called John and it's funny. And he, always, he used to call me big man as a joke. He goes, big man, you want me to go be a security guy? Like you kind of didn't. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, and he goes. Now all of a sudden I had breakfast with him last week. He goes, it's literally our philosophies at the team level, bringing it to this yeah. side of the industry where instead of security people going in, try to sell this, you talk about sponsorship, you talk about announcements, you know, him being involved with all the PR we've done in the past. And he just said, I blended that together. And he's now involved where he says, here's how we should maybe look at market it. Here's how we should, you know, same thing mm -hmm. takes, takes how we grew up in a business comes to the interview, has a presentation says, here's what yeah. I think we can do. But then he's using all his connections through, you know, whether it's connections he knows at the NFL through me or Laura or other people, he's then going to, you know, Joe and going to people at the MLS. We got people at Major League Baseball, you know, the Tony Brazilis of the world, who's another one who, 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 you know, I found, you know, taking tarps out at the Somerset Patriots game. And he's now running baseball him, yeah. academies and everything for, you know, he was working directly for, you know, with Derek Jeter for a while. Like, so, oh. um, but now he's calling, he's just using the the infrastructure of everyone we know. He knows all these GMs from being at Barclays and he's just calling them up saying, let me get in. Yeah. Um, some mm -hmm. of the work I'm doing with some of the brands I'm doing, I'm like, let me get you some, some connects. So, um, and look, even as I've been navigating with doing the, I, I, the number one thing people are asking me when I've when doing some of this consulting, like, Hey, I got some open positions. Can you help me? And I was like, I, I've placed four people um recently who've um you know uh, unfortunately there was some the garden went through another transition there were some really really good people um two in particular one of them worked for me forever and mm -hmm. i um i i just called around and i'm like you need to hire this person <sighs> and um this one place hired him like within a week and just said he's in so mm -hmm. um i um so me and Leo Arline always joked around because we'd always get called and we're like, maybe one day because everyone calls us for jobs or for ticket hookups. So maybe we can open up like a, a recruiting ticket company, you know, like yeah. and do something, you know, bring the two brands together. So we always joke around about that. But um, but yeah, they, they, look, I hate to say it, the day of just calling someone and, you know, putting your resume up and it, it happens once in a blue moon. Cause I have heard it and applying on LinkedIn or this, but it's all, it's all who, you know, unfortunately, especially in this industry. So again, yeah. if I could forward a resume or do anything, I feel like I'm constantly doing that to the point where it literally was always a job for me. But I just, yeah. you know, when people call me, you know, like I got this job, like someone took the call cause they said they knew you. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Cause someday I'm going to ask for their favorite return. So, um, <laughs> so I'm still yeah. waiting for that day to come, but, but um, yeah. no, it's, it's, it's all good. And look, hiring good people is also hard. I think yeah. a lot of people take my call when I'm like, Hey, you should look at this person because, you know, as many jobs that are out there, like it's hard finding good people these days. Cause not everyone yeah. wants to work the hours in this industry. Not as many people are passionate. So if you're like, this person has done this and they were with me, um, it just helps to give some people like up. Yeah, absolutely. And again, folks, as you're hearing this, I mean, like that generosity, I think of the time, that investment, um, you know, and at the end of the day, sometimes it's like, there's, there's something that you can hold your head up and know that you have positively impact so many people's journeys. And it's also kind of fun to be like, oh yeah, I got a guy, I got a gal, you know? And like, you can, it's, it, it, but it's, it's so magical when you can see it happen. And I think you're right. Like there's a, there's something to say when you're like, no, trust me, I know this person. And also, you know, and speaking to like, what do you look for in people? Sometimes it's like that person who, you know, that chaos can be erupting and that person can calm, stay calm and find their way through it together. So, yeah. 
Well, it's funny. I'll put a, like a lot of youth or friends of whose kids or people hit me up on a younger side or maybe, and I'll say, you know what we're going to do? Cause I also want to challenge him a little bit. I go, if you really want me to help you instead of just saying, I'm going to call this person or that person. I'm like, when you're home, I want you to go through my LinkedIn page and I want you to just see who in my, now I know there's a lot of people and there's a lot, but I'm like, <laughs> go through it. And if there's someone you think would make um, sense for you, let me know. And if it's mm -hmm. someone, cause sometimes it's, it's an easy one, like yourself or this one or that one. And other times it's like, oh, it's just a friend or whatever. But like, if someone then goes through that process to me, I'm like, okay, they really want to, when someone's mm -hmm. like, okay. I've had a lot of people where they just thought like, oh, you're not just going to call the, <laughs> the guy, you know, with the devils or here. And I'm like, no, I'm not like, why don't you tell me what you're looking for? Yeah. Give me your goals, what area of the business, what area. And if then you have it come together, then I will do it for you. Um, mm -hmm. So I also want to make sure, especially with kids on the younger side trying to break in, that it's not just going to get handed to you and, you know, go through some of the process to get it. But there's such an edge with kids today between the LinkedIn's and the Twitter. Like we didn't, yeah. you know, I tell people, I'm like, I barely had email when I was applying for jobs. So, you know, that's how far I go back and people laugh. I'm like, you know, I, I, I still have all my rejection letters from, you know, the Yankees and this one and that one, when I got out of school and I'm like, I'm going to work in sports and yeah. send George Steinbrenner, a, you know, a baseball, my resume on it. And I thought I was cool. And um, I got rejection letters mailed to me like two weeks later. And, you know, I still got them saved in a, you know, in a, in a box, but you know, that that's what you remember, but, and you got to go through the process. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's so funny. I know it was before email and the LinkedIn and all that. I remember my version that was literally flying myself to New yeah. York city and meeting people in the MBA where I was like, I got to get in here. So um, well, you are such a busy guy, so I want to kind of wrap this up here. I've got two things, um, if we can squeeze it in. And one is, we've talked a lot about what you've seen, um, a bit about what you're seeing now. Is there anything that you think is going to be like next? Any, like, almost call it like a prediction, so to say, kind of from the momentum of the way you've seen things moving? You know, look, I think, it, you know, when you look at the, you know, obviously the NIL stuff in college has gotten really interesting. Um, so that's going to be something to keep your eye on. You know, this gaming space as it opened, obviously it's taken over the world. I, I still remember being at an NBA meeting once and it's had to be a good 10 years ago. And Adam Silver's like, I want fans to be at a game where they're going to pick up their phone and they're going to place a bet whether Steph Curry hits a free throw or not. And I remember looking at a colleague going, Adam's unbelievable, but he's out of his mind. And <laughs> he wasn't out of his mind. It was there. Yeah. I think the digital streaming and the, uh, you know, the ability to get content when you want, how you want, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, the, you see how the NFL did it this year when they created, created the NFL plus. So, you know, you buy in a little bit more just to get it, you know, Dallas Cowboys is a huge brand and they're all, you know, they have fans all over the, all over the world. So they want to buy in just for that instead of direct TV, you know, NBA now is doing where you can just buy the last couple minutes. So I think that's going to keep evolving in the way some of these, you know, these, these leagues, whether it's NFL with Amazon and how you would think that's never going to happen. The MLS Apple deal is going to be very interesting for a league that's making so much strides, but now they're saying, you like the league, you got to pay for it. Mm. Um, season ticket holders get it, but they may not have that just going around the channel. All of a sudden, seeing a, a, a Red Bull game on or someone where you're like, oh, let me check this out a little bit. So that'll be interesting. And, you know, what's going to happen with the NBA and TNT and Turner is going to be another one. So I think the TV, the content, getting it when you want, how you want. Again, I, I, I got a 15-year-old son who, you know, is a plays hoops every day in and out won't sit there and watch a game with me because he'll just grab it on his phone and get a couple highlights when he's ready to do it. You know, yeah. same thing with the NFL. He's, you know, he'll watch some games with me, but it's more about his fantasy team. And so really getting to that younger fan through that and yeah. you see teams doing a lot more on TikTok and delivering mm -hmm. more content. I mean, they always say content is king. And I felt like that was just like a tagline forever, but it's finally gotten there. Yeah. And, um, that's getting your marketing. But as I also say, I think that's eventually going to really change the ticketing landscape because I right. always felt a challenging thing in the NFL, even though there's nothing more powerful than the NFL. There's no other league that tells you to get direct TV and get this and watch in your man cave. I feel like they promote more to sit at home and watch the game on your 72 inch than they actually promote 
to go. So right. it makes for an interesting dynamic. And and coming out of COVID, although the world has gotten back to what I think, especially with people going to games and attendance for all leagues. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I said once in a meeting, you know, when the Jets were playing and we had a, a unfortunately horrendous year on the field during COVID, but I said when you were at home and we were losing a game, you just grabbed your remote and you, you put on another channel. And that was people spending six, seven hours a day with us to be at the stadium to watch games. So it, it gave people optionality. And yeah. so we, we as leaders of an organization or whatever have to stay ahead of that because mm-hmm. the fans are always going to consume us, but we got to figure out how they're going to consume us and how they're going to stay, uh, you know, have that fan affinity um, no matter yeah. what. So it's going to be interesting yeah. what happens on, on that space. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And so then the last thing I do this with every um, guest is ask them because we hit so many topics in our conversation here and you've got people um, around the country who are tuning in for this. So if there's anything that you one or two things that you want to make sure that people have as takeaways from our time together, what would that be? You know, look, we, we've talked about getting into your career and it doesn't matter sports or whatever, but it, it just and it's probably me just getting a little bit older in life and seeing my kids get older. But it just all does go quick. It goes yeah. very, very quick. So whether you're in sports or whatever, you, you got to make sure you take a step back and enjoy the journey and just make sure you're you're taking that journey with good people, people you could trust. But again, I can't say enough. Um, this world all it goes too quick. And, you know, unfortunately I'm getting an age where you get some calls where people are starting to God forbid pass away and you're getting there. And, you know, so, um, not to end on a sour note, but, you know, like I said, I can't, I can't think of it enough. And that's one thing I've been doing personally the last yeah. couple of years, because, um, you know, it's, it, it's a crazy world. And again, we look at COVID no one, you know, I remember sitting there going, what's this COVID thing everyone's talking about. And all yeah. of a sudden the whole world just stopped. I remember my boss at the Jets called me. I was downstairs. He goes, can you pop up? And he, he said to me, we're going to shut the office down for two. I literally laughed. And I'm like, come on, two weeks. And he just kind of <laughs> gave me like, I think. And yeah. I started coming back, but we literally didn't see the general employee for 14 months. So it's, yeah, um, yeah. so you never know. And just, yeah. just enjoy the time, you know, with your family and loved ones. And, you know, you just, you just got to take it in when you can. We all want to work hard and, and, and do great things in our career, but you got to figure out, you know, who to do it with, how to do it with, and, and make sure again, at the end of the day, you surround yourself with some great people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And you are too. And I can't thank you enough for the impact that you've had on my life and on so many others. So thank you for your time today and all you're doing, Freddie. And for sure. it was so great seeing you. As I said, I, I haven't seen you in um, live in a room in 15 years. And I think we're, <laughs> it felt like we were back at 390 Murray Hill Parkway. So absolutely. Um, so it's always great seeing you and I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks so much. All right, everybody have a great day.